Building is one of the most integral parts of Azure Lane, bringing the hearts of many around the world to build some overly proportional waifus or some illegal lollies they lust over in their alone time. Though if one is unlucky in obtaining their beloved, one may become enraged and start losing their ways, becoming one with the pay to win faction. And with around 600 ships in the game and rising, it's easy for one to fall from such grace. So I am here to take a stand and change the way you see Azure Lane by eliminating the use of wisdom cubes in order to show that one should show joy with what they already have. This means that during this quest, I'm unable to build, do cube analysis projects, or make any PR ships. The goal? Completing the main story relying on purchasable and droppable ships only. The quest is not going to be an easy one, but it will be for the greater good of the Azure Lane community. I'm your Commander Vulcan, and this is the Cubeless Warrior Challenge. Alrighty, fellas, welcome to episode 3 of the Cubeless Warrior Challenge. I'm excited to be back and playing on this account. Today is gonna be quite a long day. We have to grind through the collab event that's currently going on right now, and then we are also gonna be doing a little bit of the campaign. And also, we are going to be talking about all the new ships that have arrived and that we have access to. So, that'll be very exciting. We have a huge change in plans. And if we are able to grind through the collab, we're going to make some big jumps in progress. So, I'm very excited about today. And hopefully, you are too. Firstly, I want to give a huge thanks to all of you guys in the last episode for all the support you gave me. We literally gained like 50 subscribers in like... I don't even know like three or four days or something which was absolutely ridiculous so thank you guys so much another thing is in the last episode i did mention that whoever guessed the amount of cubes i had or was closest to the amount would get a special prize and i'll be announcing that at the end of the episode so make sure you watch all the way through so you don't miss out on who the winner is anyway let's go ahead and talk about all the new ships that we have access to and some of the plans that I've changed going on into the future. So there are some good news and some bad news with the recent changes that I've discovered and the recent changes uh, in the game regarding construction and collabs and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and start out with the bad news. Bad news is Yudachi's retrofit item is actually not in the prototype shop. I don't know why I assumed it was. So we don't really need to prioritize getting Yudachi. And now we don't have access to one of the best destroyers in the game. I still want Yudachi at some point, but now is definitely not going to be the time to grab her. Now let's move on to the good news. And trust me, there are a lot of good news. Uh, firstly, about two weeks ago from now, Azure Lane Meta posted out a tweet essentially saying some ships were removed from the generic banners and were added to the metal shop and the guild shop. That gives us access to one of the many good tanks that we now can get, which is Minneapolis. Minneapolis is going to be by far our best mobbing tank. Uh, that we can access fairly easily. I believe she's in the metal shop, so all it's going to cost is 80 medals. Uh, I think in the previous episode, I kind of mentioned that medals would be a little hard to get, but after farming 3, 4, like a billion jillion times, it's really not that hard when Houston decides to drop 24-7, so it should be fairly easy to get Minneapolis. The problem is we do have to roll getting an SR heavy cruiser in the metal shop and if we don't then we're kind of fucked. With the release of the universe in unison war archive we do have access to another strong tank in the form of rune muse. Now some of you guys in the previous episode did mention about rune muse and I was already planning on getting her at some point. Now the main problem is I was gonna get independence and I still do plan on getting independence from the core data exchange. Now there's two conflicting characters I kinda had to get in the core data exchange and knowing that core data is pretty difficult to obtain in the game and we also need to buy gear from the core data exchange. I'm not too sure if it's actually worth getting Rune Muse or even independence, I don't know. At best, we can probably get only one and save the other for like the end game. So I'm thinking maybe we use, maybe we get 
independence for the end game because we really don't need carriers but at the same time i'm like do we really need rune muse a tank when we when we already have another tank that is from the collab that just got released like about a week ago uh her name is kala ideas basically she is a large cruiser so very beefy stat wise and she has a little bit of defensive support and capabilities in the form of evasion and then giving a evasion and healing capabilities to the backmost ship or the frontmost ship depending on where you position Kala. So I feel like she's going to be a pretty good mobbing tank as well as Minneapolis. Now ideally I would get Kala and Rune so that way we have one good tank for each fleet but like I said before, Rune Muse is going to be pretty difficult to obtain. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to get her uh, anytime soon, but I'm definitely going to get her at some point in the future. On the topic of collab units, we do have Claudia Valance. Uh, Claudia Valance is a light carrier who can heal uh, the Vanguard. And I think she can heal herself. I'm actually not too sure. But we definitely need to pick up Claudia because she's just outright better than Shoho, especially in combination with the auxiliary gear that goes along with her and her augment module that I can get from the uh, Atelier Ryza collab as of right now. So if we don't get Claudia, it's definitely gonna leave a mark in my soul. She's priority number one for today. Kala is priority number two and everyone else is going to be a different priority that I'm not going to bother explaining because that would take forever. Definitely going to be doing a lot in the collab today and I'm very excited. The last ship I want to talk about is Chaser. Chaser currently is available in the guild shop but there is a bug and she's actually not supposed to be in the guild shop but I decided you know what I think it's fair game that I can still get her because she technically is free at the moment and you know with the collab they are free at the moment so even if i'm not allowed to get her because i still technically have to build her and it's yostar's fault that she's in the guild shop i think it's still fair game it'll make all the other runs in the future that people do a little more spicy a little more different than what i'm doing and that's kind of what i want i don't want everyone that runs this challenge to run the same exact strategy and it be stale if you if you catch my drifts anyway let's go ahead and move on and talk about some of the things i did in my off time so a couple of things that i want to cover before i actually oh okay i guess you're gonna talk huh how are you interrupt me like that okay i see how it is we do now have access to the research academy and i have been queuing up some stuff now don't don't look at this right now i know you're looking at this you're like oh my gosh basic research cringe don't worry it's just because i don't want to spend coins because they are pretty hard to get as a newer player so i've been mainly doing basic research and some rigging analysis using some of the uh silver parts or plates i guess they call it don't mind this and plus like i got three gold basic researchers like come on you, you gotta take the goldies when you when you see them another thing we did unlock is the me officers this stuff so i did manage to get uh, a couple of uh elite uh ships going and they got decent talents i mean they got I mean, it's it's ultra rare, but like they're I feel they're two of the worst talents to be honest. I've also started expanding the dorm. I expanded it all the way, and uh, we need gems now to access the second floor, which we actually do need because, especially from the way I record videos, it's usually all the combat is in one sitting. So having that is just going to be like a nice uh, quality of life improvement for myself. So. We're gonna need 500 gems here, and I am working towards a furniture set, but I don't know which one is the best furniture set um, for the amount of mood you get. I believe the best one that I saw, and if you guys have any other suggestions, feel free to comment down below, is gonna be this Iron Blood Winery because it gives 51 mood for a relatively cheap price, which I think is pretty solid, so. This is probably going to be our first target to buy. Now let's move on to the ships that I have gotten. You guys might have seen some of them in the uh, dorm earlier, but 
I did manage to get Belfast uh, from the metal shop because I did pull enough metals from retiring uh, Houston, like I mentioned before. And I have started leveling up Prince Oi again because we kind of need to start replacing some of our units. Putting Prince in instead of Portland and Indianapolis is going to be a huge help. Opens up another ship slot for the mob fleet where we could use somebody else like uh, Signet or even Laffy, I guess. Um, we really don't have any good targets. Uh, I did end up getting Kaga on 3-4, which was pretty exciting. Unfortunately, no Akagi, so we won't be running Kaga anytime soon. But I mean, if I get lucky and I get that Akagi, you know I'm going to be running both of them together in like the boss fleet or in PvP or something. We did end up getting Laffy from 3-4 farming as well. We did get Arizona from the guild shop. Uh, I don't think we'll be using her as I intended due to uh, Claudia Valance being a healer and it kind of she kind of just outclasses Arizona unfortunately but she is a battleship so we will be using her for a uh, hard mode just to fill up the requirements. Lastly we did get Yorktown not the most exciting but I thought it's worth mentioning because I do like Yorktown I uh, don't think she'll necessarily be useful now, my whole idea before was that she was going to replace Lexington in the boss fleet, but by the time I level her up and actually use her, there's a good chance that I'll probably get Enterprise from the metal shop or from completing the rookie missions because believe it or not, I almost forgot about the rookie missions. Right now, we're between level 60 and 80 for the two main fleets and I have started leveling up farming fleets. So Ranger, Fletcher, Hermes, Amazon, Langley, and Thatcher. Of course, all of them are uh, not limit broken at all. So I can save as much oil as possible. I will be using this fleet um, sooner or later to farm on 3-4 to get more toolbox prints. On the topic of gear prints, I have been farming a little bit of gear prints. So we're kind of at this point where each of our Vanguard ships has uh, either a toolbox or they either have anti-torpedo bulges, uh, fire extinguishers. Now, ideally I would want each one of my Vanguards to have a toolbox. And then next we can actually start farming up these hydraulic steering gears. We'll use this in the meantime while we wait for the gear prints for the hydraulic steering press. I actually forgot what it's called, but uh, this thing. Oh, it's high performance hydraulic steering press. I assume that's what it's called. Let's go ahead, because I don't have enough commander level to do campaign, let's go ahead and do the collab. So we're going to go ahead and enter the collab. Now, I believe the starting levels are going to be fairly easy. We are using Prince and Laffy. I decided to take out uh, Portland and Indianapolis since uh, they're not going to do that well, I feel like, in the mid to end game. So I decided to just add Prince for, for now as like a buffer, uh, buffer tank until I level up Minneapolis and then I also get Kala Ideas. We can also use her as a boss tank. I don't know how well she'll be for that. Hopefully she'll do some good work and hopefully we can get Rune Muse in a decent amount of time. Now I'm hoping by the time we get to the harder stages, our ships will be a little more leveled up because as I mentioned before, they are slightly under leveled and we're gonna need all the levels we can get. Now, the good news about this particular event is that there's this thing called the Core Nexus, I believe. And basically, it's kind of like a, a powering thing that powers your ships up whenever you farm. Um, so, for example, one of the Core, core Nexuses, I think that's what they're called, does give like an offensive boost. One of them gives a defensive boost. One of them heals your ships. And then there's also some good farming uh, core nexuses as well. So there's one that increases your ship's affinity. And then there's another one that increases the amount of XP they gain. So if we are struggling, we there is a chance that we're probably going to get the 
defensive uh, core nexuses and then some more of the offensive ones because I think in this event they give you an offensive core nexus for free which is good uh, we're definitely gonna need the offensive core nexuses especially when we have like zero ammo like this and we still have to kill a mob fleet um, it'll definitely help neutralize the uh, out of ammo effect on our mob fleet for the boss fleet I did decide to go ahead and replace Cleveland with Belfast since uh, Belfast is pretty much leveled up to where my uh, main fleet is and uh, yeah I'm gonna try to use her because uh, Cleveland I feel like Cleveland is like not that great right now like yeah she's a good ship against planes and uh, she's a good anti-air counter but right now where we're at we're not really having any issues dealing with planes like to a to a great extent like I think I think in the last episode we were struggling a little bit it's mainly because we don't have any anti-air guns so I think once we get anti-air guns uh, we'll be in a good spot the bare minimum we have to get is 10,000 points and all of the gear so the way this event works is I'm not there yet so I can't really show you guys but I'll explain it to the best of my ability essentially you have to farm up these uh materials on five different stages they're called gathering sites by collecting those materials you can synthesize other like gear augments and stuff like that oh we got an extra copy of cleveland interesting so the two pieces of gear that we really need is the elixir and the mystic robe and both of them are auxiliary pieces of gear needed for claudia valance uh that essentially boost her healing skill oh we got deutschland hey we're getting some nice ships all right um that is one thing i forgot to mention there are some decent ships we can actually get from ship drops one of them is shigure who does give protection to the your entire fleet um if you're not running her with yukikaze so she could be like a nice uh pick she also has i believe she has like an emergency maneuver skill something of the sort where she increases her own evasion by like uh, a certain percentage and then we can also get z1 which synergizes with z23 and z46 because she buffs z class destroyers definitely worth picking up especially since we're already going to be grinding this event for quite a while and uh yeah i mean you never know we might switch to a z-class destroyer vanguard damn look at this guys i did one of the permanent events right because uh, they give you resources and stuff we got fucking cock blocked on day nine i just thought that was funny and also sad so we are soft locked out of permanent events what a shame. Did get Issei. That's a huge pickup because the only other way to get Issei um, was definitely from the requ from requisitioning. So even if she's not great, I think getting her at some point is pretty good because we're not going to be able to requisition anytime soon. We're on to T4. This is where shit gets a little hard. Mob fleet is struggling. Our boss fleet was fine last round. We'll see how things go. And if we are struggling, I have a couple of strategies and tricks up my sleeve that I have yet to explain to y'all. So I'll go ahead and, and explain those if necessary. On to the last stage, T5. Oh, not yet. We have to do this one more time, actually. <laughs> I almost had you guys, didn't I? You guys really thought I was going to T5, but I wasn't. All right, we beat T4. Relatively easy. Mob fleet was struggling. This is where the moment of truth comes. If we can beat this stage with relative ease we're going to be in a good spot for farming the gathering sites mainly because these stages here are the same level as the ones on the gathering site i expect prince and laffy to both die maybe not on this particular battle but uh as the battles go on definitely um i'm hoping that hunter meta can at least survive so that our, our main fleet can do damage the vanguard's doing good though yeah it's just the main fleet here um, dying to planes, so let's just go ahead and retreat. I we we can still win this. Um, we have Cleveland, so let's try adding Cleveland to the squad, and let's hope she can do some uh, good work. Seems like we're making better progress. Haven't really encountered planes though. Prince is on the brink of death. There goes Prince. Cleveland's looking good, and so is Hunter Meta, which is kind of all we need. 
at least for now. 3000 HP? It's the longest elite fleet battle in history? Holy cow. Well, somehow, somehow Cleveland's staying alive. 300. Torp's coming on the way. Oh my god. Two minutes in a 10 second battle. We got a B. That is definitely not what you want to see. Surprisingly, Shuhu didn't die. Round two. I feel like I'm playing in the X stage. I'm not even kidding. I thought last last time was bad. Nah, this time's pretty bad. Okay, now nah, we're dead. We're dead. We're going down here. You know what? It's just this guy because he has so many planes. The other elite fleet, we were actually doing okay. Uh, I mean, it took like 10 years. Don't get me wrong, but uh, we were we were doing the works. Let's try using our boss fleet and see how it goes. Maybe our mob fleet, our current mob fleet can take on the boss and we can use this as like a mob fleet, potentially. Now I doubt it because they have no healing, but they do have the numbers and damage wise. And we got smoke screen, that's going to help out a lot. And we're running double line formation, so we're going to get extra evasion. That was a level 2 fleet. We came out of there pretty unscathed. Vanguard took a bit of a beating. Elena's about to die, I can't do anything about it. All we have is Jav. We gotta stick we gotta stick Javelin in the back and try to let her survive. I'm hoping Helena comes out alive this battle. And I think next battle we can afford her death. It's gonna suck, but that's we're gonna have to run Javelin, Soar You, Her You for the boss. Yeah, that'll go well. On to the boss. Here we go. This is for all the damn marbles. Luckily, he's out of the zone. The level 80. It, now, if he's anything like the EX stage, because I did do the EX stage on my uh, on my main account, there is a small chance. But if he's got backup, we're pretty much dead. Javelin's doing her evasiveness stuff. Her speed is coming in clutch a little bit. Not gonna deny that. We kind of just have to stall for planes, I think. I don't know. I don't really have an idea. We're, I mean, like, there's so many, there's so many ships here. I got no firepower, no torp. Uh, we're, we have zero ammo. I'm somehow about to die. What did that happen? Okay, well, we go down. All right, so I did trade out some units. We're gonna be using Kaga because she is technically better than Long Island. I feel like maybe I'm wrong. I'm not too sure. We're kind of just pulling loose strings here. But the whole goal here is we need the mob fleet to at least kill two enemies and then get intercepted by this blue kaiju guy uh, so that my boss fleet doesn't have to worry about uh, getting intercepted there. And then we go ballistic. I did replace uh, Prince because Prince wasn't really doing anything uh, for the uh, mob fleet. So I'm hoping Laffy can at least do damage. Um, but we'll see. And I did upgrade some equipment. So hopefully we could do some good stuff. Hunter meta died? Oh god. Okay, it's just Cleveland. We gotta hope for plane damage now, which is not gonna be very likely. Cleveland does have the firepower though. We have to make it out alive on this battle if I want a realistic chance of winning. What? How'd I die? Wait, what? Bruh, okay, nah, that's a that's a reset and a half. We have to we have to win. If we don't win, then we're we're not gonna win this level at all. Uh Lexington still damaged. Should have moved Kaga in the middle. I wasn't really thinking. We have to kill these ships, or else more subs are gonna spawn, and that's gonna be bad news for us. We lost! Oh my god. If we put Kaga in the middle, we would have won. Damn, dude, our mob fleet cannot like not do it. All right, here we go. Round two. Boss, 100 bars of health, level 80. You hate to see it, but if it's anything like the EX stage, there's a chance I can I can win. So far, it seems like it's so. And we're dead. All right, thanks, game. We can try to throw out three planes and dodge, but nah, we're pretty much dead here. Oh, we, we dodged it, though. And now for part two... Here we go. This is where the magic happens. We only have 17 seconds? 17 seconds? What the fuck? Okay, we're dead. Might as well just throw out all three of our planes and hope for the best. I mean, like, this is pretty brutal, I'm gonna be honest. It's definitely doable, though. 
We just need the mob fleet to not get completely fucked over. Four bullets left, which means we have plenty of ammo. The boss is gonna trigger, and our health is looking better than last time, so... Here goes nothing. This is the most optimal situation we can have to defeat this guy. Okay, yeah, just go ahead and throw everything. You're gonna shockwave. 66, 59, okay, yeah. Definitely in a lot cleaner run than last time. Doesn't matter, we just gotta do damage here, make sure we don't die. And, uh, I mean, we barely did any damage, that's kind of bad. But we survived! In the EX stage, we would have died there a thousand hundred percent. This should be a dub. Hurry is going out and we beat the boss finally. I am so happy. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is actually crazy. I did not think we could beat that. I'll be 100% honest. So unfortunately, we could not really grind through the collab, but I think in my off time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start farming up T4 and uh, just trying to level up as well. And then when I ha when I feel like I'm at a more comfortable level, I'll go ahead and do T5, do the gathering sites, and then go ahead and buy the stuff I need. So real quick, I just want to talk about that stuff. First priority, obviously, is getting Claudia Valance, uh, which is 8,000 points, and we're actually quite close to getting her. Now, if we do end up getting her on a drop, then uh, I think we're going to skip out on buying Claudia. But I think once I hit 8,000 points, I'm just going to buy her regardless. Um, unless if I get, a, obviously, a ship drop before. Uh, next priority is probably going to be these plates, maybe? Um, the plates are going to be pretty good. The augment modules, we got to get as well. And I actually want to start farming up on uh, cognitive chips because we are almost at that area where we can actually start cog chipping up uh, you know ships like her you and hunter meta and stuff and obviously cognitive arrays are going to be a good pickup it's a little pricey but uh, we got to start stacking up because we don't have that many let's move on to chapter six maybe we can get some levels and then go back to the boss fleet uh, during the meantime Alrighty, so congratulations to M's Dungeon for guessing the closest amount of cubes I had from the last episode with a guess of 167 and I had a, I believe I had around 162 cubes. So you were only off by five, so congratulations. Obviously, we're gonna be doing the same sort of thing for this episode. So guess how many cubes I have by the end of this episode. Leave it down in the comments and in the next episode, I will reveal who the winner is. Another thing before I end the video off, First of all, I kind of want to, I mean, I want to apologize for my delayness and my lateness of this episode and kind of the quality. I feel like it's just, it wasn't there this time, but I'm hoping next time uh, I'll be coming back swinging. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, I made a community post about a week ago, basically explaining kind of the things that happened to me. So I wasn't in the best headspace, but I think now and moving forward, I should be a little better. Uh, I didn't realize how bad it was until I actually started editing this video. I had such- I had the hardest time just focusing, so, uh, I'm- I'm- I really am sorry. This could have been so much better. I'm- I'm just, like, so mad at myself, and, uh, just, you know, I mean, it sucks. It sucks. Just- just know what the fuck happened. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. For next week, uh, we will be doing quite a bit of campaign farming. We were struggling with some planes, um, so we're going to need some anti-air guns. In Chapter 6, we were struggling with some SD bombers, so I'm going to have to deal with those. For this series, I think I've decided on like a somewhat of a schedule. Uh, before, I didn't really have a schedule, but I think now I'm going to start uploading the, this video about every two weeks. Um, the reason being is what I'm thinking is I, I progress in the game for about a week and then I have another week to sort of edit the video. Now, it might sound like an, an, an hour, or not an hour, but a whole week to edit a video is kind of a lot. Like, I, I want to do so much more for my videos. You guys don't understand. So I think a week should be good enough if I'm diligent and I'm not procrastinating. So yeah, hopefully you guys don't mind. Uh, ideally, I would want to, you know, make a video every week. That's not gonna happen. But every two weeks or every week and a half, maybe, I think it'll be good. 
So yeah, uh, look forward to that. And again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, help your boy out mentally, really. I don't even care about the numbers, but mentally, please. I need it. <laughs> but yeah, that'll be all. Love you guys. Y'all stay safe. Stay fresh. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys uh, next time. Peace.